Welcome everyone to the MetSpa Accelerator podcast brought to you by Everbow Marketing, the go-to resource so you can get the latest hacks and best practices so that you can market and grow a profitable medical aesthetics practice. Welcome everyone to the 50th episode hey. of the Mets Ball Accelerator podcast. Wow, big 5-0. I know, <laughs> we're almost at the end of the year. Almost at the end of the year, we're excited to be bringing you guys this content. What are we going to talk about this time? So it is the end of the year and yes. we want to talk about what worked and what totally sucked in 2019. <laughs> And so yeah. w when we were doing some research for this episode, I really wanted to like bring not only like marketing and social media and advertising into the mix, but also some of the business operations and what we've seen throughout the, the year, like within our clients, within other people's practices, among like people that we've talked to, what has actually worked for their business and what they might need to work on a little bit more for 2020. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and dive right in and kind of share uh, the insights we have with everybody. Yeah. So I actually want to start with some of the bad things oh, <laughs> so okay. we can end on a good note, you know? Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the first things I wanted to do is people not doing their market research. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this one might is a really big one because if you do not know who you're talking to, who your ideal audience is and who is the people that are actually coming, what they need, then everything will just kind of like fall into pieces, right? Yeah. Um, I, I would say for this one, like obviously when, when people talk about market research, there's it's so it's a lot <laughs> and it's really deep and really in depth and um, you might not have the resources to get this whole market study done on your local area and all that stuff. But I mean, there's certain things that can be done that you can do, you know. And so one of the things that we do with our clients all the time is just identifying who their ideal client is and trying to get a more thorough understanding and giving it a face, giving it a name. Obviously, it's all made up, right? But it's based <laughs> off of like, man, who can I like that person is like our best client. I want more people like her and then defining that and then sharing that with all of your staff members so they know who that person mm -hmm. is. Simple things like that, you know, yeah, her name's Mary, she's between the ages of 40 and 60, and she's in this place right now in her life where maybe her kids have gone off to college, and she's now in a place where she can invest a little bit more time in herself. Mm -hmm. Little things like that that honestly do make a big difference uh, whenever you are, uh, uh, I guess, putting your marketing message out there because you want to make sure that you're personalizing your message. Yeah to those type of people. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that you have to exclude everybody else, yeah. right? But it is like, you really need to speak to this person and it's just gonna... And I, yeah, sorry. And I, no, no, no. And, I, and I will say that, uh, I think, because a lot of people, we've heard this, we hear this all the time, we're like, who's your market? Everybody, everybody's my market, you know? But the <laughs> idea is that if you speak to everybody, you're basically speaking to no one, right? It's like you're just shouting at the masses instead yeah. of whispering to the right person. Yeah, and it's not going to be as effective as mm -hmm. you kind of honing in on who it is. It doesn't mean that you're going to, like Billy said, you're going to repel these other people. It, it actually means that you're going to be able to speak to them a little bit better and they're going to hear your message from everybody else, all the other messages that are going out there because you're being personalized. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So another big one that we feel like hasn't worked so well is not asking for testimonials and reviews. And this is something that we've made a whole episode about this. We have a yeah. couple blog posts on our website about this, how important this is. And it is just a step that people forget about yeah. in, within their customer journey. They don't they have about it. it. They are, mm -hmm. they forget about it. They're afraid to ask for the review or the mm -hmm. testimonial a lot of the times or, or for the testimonial, I'll say the review is easy, <laughs> Yeah, but like and getting still, a video testimonial, don't you know, do it. yeah, yes. they don't do it. They forget. Like you're saying a lot of times it is just, you forget, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like what we said before in some of our other episodes, automating that process is going to yeah. be one of the most important things that, we recommend that you guys, you know, to do Definitely. so that you don't forget these things. Like, and, and I encourage you guys to also look at what are some of the operational things in your business that can be automated right. so that it's not left to human error. Yeah, exactly. You know? And just forgetting about it because we know the impact that uh, testimonial and oh, gosh, reviews on Google and Facebook. People are make. going to Google the business to get there and therefore they'll see 
the reviews, okay? Yes. So it's super important yeah. that you have some good reviews. Especially if you have uh, some bad ones because, I mean, you know, it happens. Um, having a lot of really good ones will definitely like balance that. So yeah. making sure that that's within your customer journey yeah. is essential. And that's the thing too, like you, you might be asking yourself like, oh, I wonder if people are not going to see it. But think about it, like everybody today uses Google Maps to get anywhere. Yeah. So they are going to Google your business mm -hmm. at least from one point. You know, at one point in time, they yeah. will Google it and it will be very apparent what your reviews are. <laughs> yes, yes, so very important. Yes. Uh, another like thing that I do want to point out, and this kind of goes along with this, is having a good, like not having a follow-up system. Something that if you do not have it, probably your 2019 probably had a little bit of issues here and there. Maybe you did not meet your goals for, for the year about having people come into your practice and scheduling those leads. Yeah. No, I think uh, in regards to the follow-up systems, I mean, it's huge. Like, I think mm -hmm. when it comes to buying anything, right, you want to, like, at least in the society that we live in today, it is very of how fast can I get this? You know, we yes. live in this place where Amazon Prime is something we're Standard. all accustomed to. Yeah. yeah. And if I don't hear a response, if I don't call, and, and somebody, if I call and nobody answers, or nobody responds to the Facebook message that I sent earlier, or, you know, whatever it might be, the email, the text message, I'm already looking at the next business. <laughs> yes. Yes. Unfortunately, you know? that is very true. Yeah. So having that follow-up system within your, your practice is essential to make sure that you do ha convert those leads into actual appointments. And um, I mean, we're very big in like operations and how, what's, what that is going to look like for your business. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you have one is something essential for 2020. Yes. Nice. Next one is not knowing your numbers. And, uh, and yes. so we did a big episode on this. Make mm -hmm. sure you go and check it out, right? Um, like we said before, we know it's hard to uh, sometimes to identify what those numbers are because mm -hmm. it, it is very time consuming. But guys, like any, uh, I wanna say Fortune 500 business like knows what it's gonna take to prepare their, propel their business to the next level, right? What is mm -hmm. it gonna take for them to make X amount of dollars per month, so on and so forth, right? Yeah. And so re this is really the only way that you can actually start acquiring the, the information, the data that you need to know how much do I need to spend or what do I need to do to make this amount of revenue mm -hmm. per month, right? Yeah. And, you know, so knowing those numbers of what is your cost per lead, cost per appointment, consult, cost per sale, your average sale value, your lifetime customer value, all of those things ultra important yeah and so make sure you go and check that episode out oh yeah and not even just that but um also your your conversion rates are really important yeah all Be the percentages in between right. those yeah. yeah because that that way you're gonna see within your business what where is it that you are lacking a little bit more of work right is it in your advertising is it within your sales is it in the follow-up where where are you kind of dropping the ball without knowing about it right so making sure that you have those numbers is is very very important mm -hmm. this and this, so this also translates to our next one which not knowing where to spend your money right yes. not knowing where to put in your ad spend which is basically mm -hmm. uh, going back to also kind of knowing your numbers right because once you know your numbers you know what's giving you that return on ad spend exactly. so you know if, if it's smart to spend on continue spending on Facebook or spending on Google so on and so forth right and so all of that stuff is super important and that's going to help you identify where you should be spending your money. Right. And making an educated decision of to, like where are you going to spend that and yeah. how much to spend on it. Yeah. Definitely. And then finally, the, the other one but that is pretty bad is uh, trying to do everything yourself. <laughs> I mean, we've been <laughs> or there. Or actually, I will say to yeah. add on to this one, yeah. trying to do, trying, having people do something that is not the main reason they were hired for. <laughs> That's true too, yeah. Because I was gonna you know? say, we, we've been there. I mean, as business yeah. owners, you might start wearing a lot of hats. You have to do a lot of the things yourself and that's kind of how you start. But as you grow and you create your team, like you have to bring in the experts in their area. That's what we've noticed within our business that has worked the best for us 
bringing in people that yeah. already have that knowledge, that are passionate about it, and that is the way you're gonna grow your business the best. And way. and for us, like it wasn't obviously it was something we knew we had to do, and a lot of the times, like obviously you're playing this game of like bringing somebody on, and then obviously the money that it takes yeah. to pay for this person, the investment and in there. It's kind of like a little game of you know kind of rat and mouse, and like you're obviously trying to take baby steps towards getting there. So. Um, don't be afraid to do it. Take the plunge and you're going to see that it, it is going to pay off once you kind of start bringing more people on to kind of help you do the work that you need that, you know, that they need to do so that you can actually focus on the work that you need to do, which is yes. working on the business, not in the business. Exactly. I yeah. love that. So let's just for a little bit more about some of the really like good stuff All that right. happened in 2019, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so first up is engaging with your customers and fans uh, or your clients right so uh, we saw this in different ways especially like in social media the algorithms and we have a whole new episode about algorithms and what that means but they change constantly Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all of these social media accounts change so constantly because they they want to make sure that the the customer experience is the best as it can be, right? Mm -hmm. But they that means that for us businesses, we need to come up with new strategies again and again and again. Yep. And the number one thing that has been consistent throughout 2019 is uh, engaging with our customers. And that means replying to comments, liking them, asking people questions, creating stories within Instagram and Facebook to make sure that there are those interactions yeah. going on. People need to know that there's real people behind yes. this business, right? And, you know, every business needs to have a face and, you know, and that face needs to communicate with the audience, you yeah. know? Yeah, or various faces if that works for yeah. your business. So whoever is gonna kind of come and say hi, that person can be really, really good to, to be the image of that. For sure. So number two, talking to your unique audience. And we kind of talked a little bit about it with you know, market research, you yeah. know who you're talking to. And this is also really, really big when you are trying to grow your social media presence. If you are talking to your ideal audience or a multiple of faces, if that is the case for you, then you need to really understand them, really know how to interact with them. What are their pains? What are their struggles? How can you help them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty kind of, you know, pretty well said. I don't think there's anything else for me to add to that. But again, guys, just super important mm -hmm. because people need personalization. If you're trying to speak mm -hmm. to everybody, then you're speaking to no one, right? Exactly. So. Even within advertising, like knowing who your audience is yeah. and getting and those. Specifically with advertising, you mm -hmm. know, the, the way that advertising is done today, it's not more, it's not you delivering this message to people. It's you having a conversation with people because of the feedback loop is so instant. Yeah. You know, with the, you know, with all the uh, social media ads and different things like that, like all that stuff just happens in an instant. And so it is a more of a conversation that you're having, which is or versus before where it was just you delivering a message to the right. public. And right now with so much competition out there, definitely like honing into who your ideal audience is, it's very important. Hell to the yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, so this kind of goes a little bit with um, like being mindful of your brand identity. So it kind of goes hand in hand, like Luis was saying, like you have to know who your ideal audience is to be able to have that conversation with them. But you also need to make sure that your brand identity is there in every step of the way. So what that means is that you need to know, uh, know and understand who that person is, but also who you are. Like, why are you doing this in the first place? Why are you in the medical aesthetics business? And what is it that you want to accomplish there? And yeah. having those things both visually and um, and written and said, then it kind of helps to form your identity within every step. Yeah. And so, guys, we've, I think we briefly talked about this before. I'm not don't really recall how much we've elaborated on it. But one of the things that we really believe in is like we said before, right? We do business people we know, we like, and we trust. And so at the end of the day, right? We, I say this, I say this a lot, but um, yeah. you know, there isn't really much of a difference between let's say you and maybe your competitor, right? At the end of the day, anybody can inject somebody else or can turn on and can turn on a machine. 
the, at the end of the day, what makes what makes the, the difference and the mm-hmm. differentiator between those two is li- really a lot of the times comes back down to just literally you, like mm-hmm. the owner, the staff members, all that stuff and the personality mm-hmm. and kind of like the core values that you put out in the marketplace. Right. So that's what makes you different. Right. The way you treat people, the way, mm-hmm. you know, you handle their the customer journey and experiences. Right. Yeah. And so that is part of your brand identity and that does need to be designed and it needs to be purposeful right yeah and so because at the end of the day that's the that's what people are going to leave with the experience that they had walking into your practice and why they're going to build loyalty to you versus your competitor because they can get injected anywhere else Mm -hmm. the reason they're loyal to you is because they built this relationship with Mm -hmm. you because of the amount of care that you've given them and they also resonate with your core values exactly right and some of the major brands do this really really well Mm -hmm. say like coca-cola for example they they are all about like it's not about the product it's about family and it's about sharing experiences so it can also you you can see it as this is not just a service that you're providing it's not just botox or injections uh, it's all it's the experience it is the ultimate result and what that will do for your client yeah that's really good. All right. <laughs> Next one. Personalization. Okay, yes. This is really, really big. And we've noticed such a big difference. And we talked a little bit earlier how, you know, you have to personalize the message. And in the different ways that we've done it is like with text messages, with emails, we make sure that it is um, personalized to this one person. Even the way it's written, like... Even like so, like I said, we would do, when we do text messages, it's not just written like like a machine writing these messages, right? It's right. actually like a real person, the way a real person communicates, yeah. right? You know, so not being robotic, you know, stuff yes. like that. Uh, yeah, even yeah. even now, like uh, with AI, you know, Alexa and Google and Siri, like they are more and more a real person because that's how we communicate. You can just say, "Hey, Alexa." where is the nearest medical spa and that is how people talk so you have to make sure that you are personalizing your message out there like you would talk to a normal person and not with this like crazy jargon yes (laughs) (laughs) so next one is text messages all right so you guys know we're a big fan of text messages obviously we've seen Uh, the impact they make yeah and that's the thing like we've seen it work and it does amazing well and the thing is it's something that not a lot of people are capitalizing on right now so it's a big opportunity for you okay um and so that's the thing like and it's the the concept is very simple so that you can understand this is like we know email works right we know if Mm -hmm. obviously we can get people to see an email with maybe our information on it then a lot of the times they will be you know they'll come in right Mm -hmm. Um, the problem with email is that it has a low open rate right so not a lot of people will see it they're opening it once a week yeah or yeah or open it very few you know not so often right but we know that text message has a 98 percent open rate Mm-hmm. Okay, so that means that we're going to get a, more eyeballs on your message. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, you're just opening another way of communicating with your yeah. audience. So a really great way just to communicate with them and kind of have that conversation. A great way to get people scheduled, to get more people to come back in and buy more, to have direct access to the practice, all that stuff. Really, really good. Yeah. So another really big thing I think that helped in 2019 is making sure that you are aware of your operations. And like we said, we go back to the customer journey and how that has to work in every single step of the way. And making sure, and this one goes with the last one, making sure your staff knows what is happening, what needs to get done, and where every um, client is, where they're at, and what needs to, again, happen at that point, right? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things we talked about in one of the previous episodes was your patient acquisition journey, right? So that, Mm -hmm. honestly, that goes back down to your operations, right? Mm -hmm. So mapping out every single thing that needs to happen so we can make sure we move this person down this process. And so, again, outlining your your operations is super important because one, it's going to help you scale faster. Two, if you ever need to, somebody leaves your business, you know, they move out of town, you lose a staff member, something like that. Mm-hmm. You need to bring somebody back on board and you want to make sure that you don't have any downtime, yeah, right? Exactly. And so ha- them following this manual of operations that they can just look at and kind of take control of the situation without minimal, with just minimal guidance 
is going to be a big asset to your business. Okay. Definitely. So even if you're ever looking to sell your business in the future, your SOPs, your standard operational procedures are going to be one of the things that they're going to be looking at. You know? Yeah. And it goes back to also like your brand identity, because if you do map out every single step of the way and how it needs to be handled, you are already speaking within your brand in every single step and your clients will notice that. Yes. They'll notice the care within it and they'll notice how, you know, your, your message is very unique. Yeah. So last one is uh, staff training. So really mm -hmm. investing some time and, yeah. you know, putting in the time in your staff, right? These are the people that are helping you build, you know, your legacy, your business, right? And so mm -hmm. we need to, you need to take care of them, right? You need to feed them and you need to, you know, kind of help them be better people. And a lot of the times it goes back down to just investing in them with training or maybe mm -hmm. some outings or whatever it might be, right? Um, and listening to them too. Oh, what yeah. is it that they need? Encouraging them when they need that, uh, making sure that they have everything they need and making sure that you are the leader in there, right? If that is your role within the company, making sure that they feel part of this culture, part of your business, and that they are actually contributing to your success. Yeah. So invest in them, right? And mm -hmm. you're going to see that pay off exponentially in your business yeah <laughs> we've seen all of these that we just said the really good things that actually worked in 2019 make huge leaps within our clients how once they adopted all of these and actually um, it might have taken a little while at the beginning a lot of work uh, a lot of like groundwork but once that is set they really see the rewards for sure 100 percent. so for 2020 make sure that you don't do some of these bad things <laughs> and make sure you work to work a little bit more on actually the good things yeah for sure guys um so yeah hopefully you guys are having an awesome december yes and uh we wish you guys happy holidays that's coming up pretty mm -hmm. soon um and Oops. sorry i was gonna say our december Promo. Oh, yeah. So uh, we <laughs> talked about this in a previous episode, but I'll go ahead and say it again. Right. Yes. So if you're not if you're in the position in your business right now where you want to take it to the next level and you need some help, then I want to invite you guys to schedule a call with me. There's going to be a link here on the show notes um, to schedule a consultation call with me. All it really is, all it is is just a talk where we get to really discover where you're at in your business and see if we can help you. If you. But if you feel like you, man, I need to do something different. I need to take my business to the next level. I really need some help. We can help you, but let's have a conversation, okay? Um, and then we can see how we can actually implement what we can do to kind of fit your business. Now, that being said, uh, we do have a special promo going on during December. Um, we are actually doing a 50% off our setup fee for any new pe anybody that comes on board. So if you if you've been thinking about it, you haven't you know don't know if it's a good time. One, it's a good time right now because you need to get ready for the new year and you plan for it. And two, we got the special promo going on. Yeah. So <laughs> yes, exactly. So and we do a, a discovery call first, which is really important to make sure that yeah. we are a good fit and we can actually help you, right? Yeah, hundred percent. So that being said, guys, the link is down below. So make sure if you're interested in that, go ahead and click on that. Besides that, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, yes. on Facebook, on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening to us. Okay. <laughs> And leave us a comment, leave us a review, let us know how we're doing. If you have any feedback, if you have any comments yes. about what type of, you know, things you're struggling with in your business and you mm -hmm. need to find out, want to find out more about, etc. Somebody that you want us to have on the show. Uh, we're going to be having more people on the show starting next year, guys. So mm -hmm. we're pretty excited about that. Stay yeah. tuned. We already have some, some shows lined up. Okay. Yes. Uh, and all right. Well, till then, we'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.